So according to the service manager at my local GMC dealership, if you buy a brand new truck and install some aftermarket parts in the front end, for example, a Cognito leveling kit and some 35 inch tall tires, well, apparently that's going to avoid the steering and suspension portion of your factory warranty. So if you have any sort of a failure, like I believe I have, they're not going to fix it. Although that actually doesn't bother me in this particular case because we're going to be upgrading rather than replacing with another factory part that's probably going to fail again in a few short months. So the vehicle in question is my 2020 84HD. I bought this thing brand new back in September of 2019. Um, it's got the L5P Duramax and we're just under 40,000 miles with it right now. Uh, it's been a pretty good truck. I love how it looks. I love how it pulls. We've had some issues with it along the way, which you guys can check out in another video that I'll link somewhere up here. Uh, but today we're going to be upgrading something in the front suspension and hopefully we're going to make this truck ride a whole lot smoother. But first, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on another project that we're doing on the channel, the 93 Ford F-150 project. Now the owner asked me to install a different engine in this and he provided a 408 stroker from Blueprint Engines, a Super Sniper EFI and a HyperSpark ignition system. And this looks a little different from the last time you guys seen this. We've got the cooling system complete. We've got you know the fan shroud, the cooling hoses. We've got the serpentine belt in place. Uh, plug wires are on, got the heater core lines on. The HyperSpark CDI box and coil are installed under the fender well over there. And really we are just some wiring and fuel lines away from actually firing this thing up. Now I am waiting on a regulator. Holly has a special one that attaches to the front rear of the Super Sniper. And it's got a built-in regulator on the back, which is really trick. I think they said that'll ship at the end of the month. So I'm waiting on that. And then I've got to make the connections to the factory fuel lines. Now Ford uses, I believe they call it a spring lock style of connector in this year. And they're a really weird connector on the F-150. I think they're a different size than some of the Mustang ones. Totally not sure, but I spent a couple hours looking for adapters to go from that style to an AN and I could not find one. So I built my own. I started over on the engine and I just chopped off the ends of the fuel rail, the two connectors feed in return that the stock fuel lines attach to. And then I bought some dash six AN weld fittings that were stainless steel. I just welded the two together. So that is my feed side right there. That's the return side over there. And these will just allow me to plug into the factory lines and install a regular old dash six AN line on the flare. I've got that little plastic protector on there now, but that's standard dash six threads. And that just kind of goes to show if you can't find what you need, sometimes you've got to make it. If you've got a TIG welder and a little bit of um, optimism, <laughs> you can try anything and make it work. So um, we'll show you that next time. I'll show you guys a complete wiring installation whenever we get to that point, because a lot of you guys have asked me how we're going to wire up the Super Sniper with the uh, HyperSpark ignition system and how we're going to get that all to interface with the truck. And we'll go over all that in a future video. Like I said, really close to starting this thing up. But today we're on the GMC. So let's talk suspension. So all the GM 2500 and 3500 trucks more or less have the same exact suspension. Uh, we've got, you know, A-arms front rear torsion bar suspension with a leaf spring out back. And the 3500s do have overloads and there might be a few other minor differences, but Chevy or GMC base model 84 or Denali, they all have the same exact shocks. Now that's kind of what we're going to be dealing with today and replacing are the factory Rancho shocks. And the passenger side front you can see is like really, really dirty. That's because the shock is leaking oil and it's dripping down the body of the shock. So one more thing that the 2500 and 3500 series trucks both have in common is that they ride kind of rough if you're driving around every day without any extra load in the thing. I mean, I've got the tire pressure back down to like 56 PSI because that's right on that threshold of where the TPMS light will come on for low tire pressure and the thing it does ride pretty rough and I think in the future uh, there's two products I've been doing some research on that I think I'm going to try out one Cognito actually has a different torsion bar up front they call it like a smooth ride torsion bar or something like that and number two uh, Celastic shackles for the back those are Supposedly something you can throw on there that'll make a 2500 HD truck ride more like a 1500. And that's something I definitely, I think I'm gonna do in the future, but for now we're just gonna be working with shocks. Um, like we talked about the stock Rancho shocks, they're so, so conditioned and a lot of people actually say that they're junk, which the truck rode okay for the first little bit, but with 40,000 miles on them, it's definitely failed. And I have noticed that the truck 
it's got some kind of squeaking and stuff going on in the front end, some odd noises, which I think are the shocks. And definitely it has a lot more bounce in it than I would like. There's one, if you guys are in Utah, you'll probably know what I'm talking about exactly. On I-15 northbound around American Fork, there's one exit, I think it's like 276, 277. Um, as you're heading north on the highway, you hit this on, or it's not an on-ramp, it's just like you go over a bridge on the highway. And you, if you're not holding on, you're practically going to bounce your head off of the ceiling. Well, with the shocks that are on the truck now, you go over that and you have like your first little bounce or whatever, but then it kind of continues to bounce up and down in a couple more times. And so combine that with you know, the leaking oil out of the shocks and the noise that I'm hearing, which I think is the shocks, it's just time to replace them. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I don't want to put back on there the same exact thing that's going to fail again. I'm going to upgrade. So today we're going to be installing some Bilstein shocks. Now the first thing to replacing shocks on any truck is just getting it up in the air and getting the tires out of the way. Now on a torsion bar equipped vehicle, anytime you remove the shocks, it's a pretty good idea to keep a jack under the control arm just so there is some spring pressure still kind of held up. There's two bolts on the top of the shock and then a single bolt down on the bottom. And after that, the shock can just lift out of the way. <coughs> I'm actually removing the old upper shock bolts so I can reuse them in the Bilsteins. Now actually the hole is luckily the same size in the upper support and you can just kind of see how the new bolt is a little bit longer. Now the reason I'm doing that is because of the upper spacer that I'm using with my leveling kit. With a spacer slit on top of the shock, it's a direct replacement. The only trick is you just gotta compress the shock to get the upper studs lined up in the mount. With the fasteners all tightened up, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to throw some grease in here just to kind of keep those ball joints and upper control arm bushings lasting as long as they possibly can. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not yet, but my pitman arm and idler arm are a little bit worn out, at least according to the dealer the last time they looked at it. So in the future, I think I'll probably be replacing those as well. I've had the stock wheels on the truck since I went down to the Pro Touring Truck Shootout back in April, so I figured it's been a couple months, it's time to put the cool wheels back on. So probably the most popular shock today on any pickup truck, I don't care if it's Ford Chevy Dodge, is a Fox 2.0. They're a great shock that works awesome off-road, although on the street they do tend to ride a little bit rougher from what I have read. I've never actually owned a set of Fox 2.0s, I'll just kind of put that out there. Uh, but I've done a lot of research on shocks and everyone seems to agree that the Bilstein 5100, the shock that I went with, rides a lot smoother on the street and it will definitely do better off-road than the Ranchos. but the 5100 is maybe like a half a step below the Fox 2.0 in terms of off-road performance. But again, the trade-off is a smooth ride on the street. And that's really where I use this truck 99.9% .9 of the time. I mean, I don't really ever go off-roading. I'm not an off-road guy. I don't have a lot of interest in doing that. Um, so yeah, the 5100 is the shock that we went with. Now, if you've ever tried to buy these or any shocks lately, you'll probably notice just about everywhere is on back order. 
And I hate buying stuff on Amazon all the time, but Amazon actually had these in stock and I got them in a couple of days. I tried several different shock websites. Nobody had them. Um, I will put an affiliate link down in the description below. So if you need a set of, Am or, uh, not Amazon shocks, if you need a set of Bilstein shocks for your 2500 HD 2011 and newer, click the link in the description. I'll have it right down there for you. Um, also, we did put the new wheels and tires on. I've had these, I've gone back and forth. I always switch wheels and tires because I kind of like changing it up. Um, these are 35, 12, 50, 20 Nitto Ridge Grapplers on a 20 by 10 Method NV605. Uh, it's a negative 24 offset and they do fit pretty good on the truck. Although you will have to do a little bit of trimming and a leveling kit if you want these on a 2020 or newer 2500 HD truck. Uh, I did a video last summer when I very first put these things on to show the leveling kit install and a little bit of trimming that you do. Basically, you've got to pull the mud flap off. There's a metal bracket behind the mud flap and a teeny tiny corner of metal that you've got to trim, but nothing that's not reversible. I could put this back to stock if I wanted. Um, anyway, so that's what we're going with now. I'll get the other side knocked out and I also have a new set of shocks for the rear that we'll swap out as well. Then we'll go for a quick drive and see if we think it rides any smoother. Now the driver's side is obviously the same exact process that we used on the passenger side. Now the great thing about replacing shocks is you really don't need any specialized tools. I mean, you can have nothing but hand tools, your basic wrenches and sockets, and you can get the job done. And in fact, you don't even need to have a garage because as you can probably tell, I'm actually working outside in the driveway since I've got a F-150 parked in my garage and it doesn't run at the moment. So I can't easily just start it up and back it out to have my own garage space. But that's all right, it's a nice sunny day, it's not too hot, so we'll get the job done. Say one thing that's important whenever you're running bigger tires like the Ridge Grappler is to keep them rotated just to make sure that they wear evenly. Now I'm pretty OCD and in fact every time I take the wheels on and off the truck I take a marker and on the very back side of the wheel right on the lip I just kind of mark the position that they were in so that way the next time I put them on the truck I can rotate them to a different position just to kind of keep the tread wear nice and even. The back shocks are super simple. There's just two bolts, one on the bottom that has nut and a bolt, and the one on the top, you don't even need a wrench to back it up because the nut is actually welded onto the frame. So just one 21 millimeter socket, and get the job done. So I actually kind of did like the red and white look of the Rancho shocks, just because the red ties in a little bit with the AT4 theme. From the certain angle, you could see the red boots when you're looking through the wheel well, but now the black boot of the Bilstein shot just kind of blends in, so it gives it a little bit more stealth look, which, I don't know, I kind of like.
So just a quick note on tire pressure. I think I mentioned earlier, I like to run the stock tires at like 56 to 55 PSI. Now that's just when I'm kind of driving around empty, but it does help the ride quality a fair amount by being able to run a lower pressure in them. You know, these load range E tires, and especially my Ridge Grapplers, those are load range F. Um, even at 55 to 60 PSI, they do run a little bit on the stiff side, but um, you don't want to pump them up to 80 just because that's really, really rough. Um, you know, if you're towing a big trailer or something, yeah, you can pump them all the way up to 80. But normally, I run them about 55. I'd go a little bit lower if I could, but the TPMS sensors just throw a fit. You know, the tire pressure light comes on, and I just hate staring at that. And don't forget to torque your lug nuts. Obviously, that's pretty important. So if you guys work at a dealership or anything like that, drop a comment down below and let me know what would be like regular retail pricing for a replacement of four shocks installed on a vehicle like this, because I can only imagine it's not inexpensive and it's probably actually a lot more than just going out and buying four new Bilstein shocks and doing it on your own. I think total with shipping, I paid just a little bit over 500 for the set of four shocks. I think Foxes are a little bit more expensive, totally not sure. but. Remember, this truck has under 40,000 miles. We're at 39,800 and change. I don't use the truck off-road. It's pretty much either driving empty or hauling a trailer all the time. Um, and for half the miles on there, I've even had my stock wheels and tires. So it's kind of odd, I think, in my opinion, that the shocks would be blown this soon. But if you're on the Facebook groups for these 2020 trucks, this you'll actually find is kind of common. Uh, this is by far the worst shock right here. This was on the right hand side front. And as you can see, it won't even hold itself all the way up. Like the top three inches right there, there's like no fluid in there. And if you just kind of leave it right in the middle, it pretty much just falls right down. Uh, this is one rear shock. This one was not as bad as the front, but the top like two inches or so kind of goes up and down pretty easy. Uh, the other two, they're probably okay, but like that's a 50% failure rate at 40,000 miles. So I'm glad we put the new ones in there. Uh, I need to get the truck out on the road. We'll do a quick test drive. I'll give you my impressions of how it's gonna drive. Now granted, we did change tires in the middle of this too, so that's gonna affect the ride quality probably a little bit, but I've driven the truck enough with both sets on there. I kind of know what to expect. Also, I'm gonna make a stop at the tire shop real quick. I'll have them just sync up the TPMS sensors because I keep a set um, in these tires here and another set in the new tires. That way I can switch back and forth as much as I want without having to you know, break the beads down and swap the sensors back and forth. So to the tire shop, then we'll hit the road. So out on the road, like the very first thing that you notice is just the noise of the tires. I always forget how much noisier the Ridge Grapplers are than the stock uh, Goodyears. Now, it's not to say the Ridge Grapplers are the loudest tire out there because I know a lot of like, you know, mud tires are much, much louder, but it's definitely got a little bit more ambient road noise than it did before. It's totally bearable. It's not like annoying, but it's just a little noise that you kind of have to be used to. Uh, in terms of the ride quality, as soon as I backed it out of the parking lot, I noticed a pretty big difference right away because before, like just little bumps, like going over a curb, those little cracks in the road where it transitions from driveway to road, uh, before it would kind of have a little bit of a bounce to it and it would have this noise in there uh, just because the shock is well, bouncing up and down with no fluid in the way to kind of dampen that motion. It did make kind of a, 
I don't know how to describe it, but it made like a shushing noise, I guess. So much quieter right now. Um, also on the back, on certain bumps before, I noticed kind of a clunking noise, and I suspected it was the shocks, and now I'm pretty positive that it was. So I don't hear that anymore. So um, we're definitely at least back to stock ride quality, probably a couple notches above that. Um, drop your comments down below about Fox shocks. I know a lot of guys love them. Um, I've never actually driven or owned a truck, rather, that has Fox shocks on it, so I can't tell you that the Bilsteins are going to ride better or worse, but just, again, based on what I've read, a lot of people do say that the Foxes are a little bit stiffer just in terms of daily driving. Again, I don't do a lot of off-roading, so that's kind of why I leaned towards the Bilsteins, but overall, i got to say I'm happy. The truck, it's smooth, it's quiet, got rid of that noise, got rid of that extra bounce, so I think we're in business. So as far as future plans for this truck goes, I've got a few things that I want to do to see if I can further improve the ride quality. I think I mentioned them at the beginning of this video. Um, Cognito torsion bars up front and Sulastic shackles out back. I think if I do those two things, it'll make it a little bit more comfortable. They say the shackles, they actually won't decrease your load carrying capability, which means I can still haul my trailer. I may put some helper bags in there at some point because it does squat down a little bit when you get the trailer on. but. Um, I'll do those two things, and then finally, the one thing I do want to add for sure, uh, steering stabilizer. These 2020s didn't come with them from the factory. In fact, I think since like 2015, they didn't put stabilizers on, so I'm going to add one of those. I'll see if I can find one that has the same Bilstein 5100 stabilizer that I have on the suspension, just so everything matches up. Um, and then I do need to replace the pitman arm and idler arm. I think those are worn out. And again, that's one more thing that the dealer is not going to do because the leveling kit, you know, avoids the warranty or whatever. But um, I'm looking at either Cognito or uh, I forget what the other one is. Um, it escapes me out, but there's the other suspension company that does a lot of uh, kryptonite. That's what it is. I think kryptonite is what I'll do on the front end. Um, so we got some more upgrades for the 2020 in the works. That might be a little ways out, but um, you're not going to want to miss that content. We've got more stuff coming up with the ugly truck. I've been messing around with ignition timing a little bit, trying to get that dialed in. Um, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a statistic out there and I'll put it up on the screen, but most of the guys that watch this channel actually aren't subscribed. So come on, man, help me out. I need 100,000 subs by the end of this year. Drop a comment, click the like button if you enjoyed today's video, and I'll catch you next time.